Would you kindly tell the court your relationship to the accused? Yes, Daddy. I'm his daughter. Uh, thank you. Did you receive 18 pounds in cash from the previous witness just after I had gone to work? Yes, I did. And what did you do with that money? I gave it to Mike. Thank you. You may stand down. Next witness, please, Mr. Michael Abbott. Uh, Mr. Michael. Mr. Abbott, will you please return to the dock? Uh, I haven't finished yet. Please, Mr. Abbott. Yeah, I've got another way, Constable. All right. All right. Uh, then, Mr. Abbott, to save us all this grief and roll, would you mind telling me what you're trying to prove? Your Lordship. I saved up that money to pay for that license. Yes. I then gave the money to my wife and told her to pay it. She gave the money to my daughter, who gave it to my son, who blew it on a black on a party. <laughs> you have my sympathy. I should think so. Therefore, I did not know that we did not have a license. And therefore, I did not know him in bail to purchase one. Yes. And furthermore, and such as it is, in view of the fact that I did not knowingly fail to purchase one, I personally am not guilty. Oh, I see. So you have summoned the wrong person. Uh, right. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, that is your case, is it? Yes, more or less. Uh, thank you. 50 pounds. Thanks. <laughs> another word. I've told you 50 times I am not paying that fine on principle. But if you don't pay, you'll go to prison. That's right. I'm going to prison. So while I'm having a farewell drink with Trevor, will you kindly pack my case? But what about your dinner? I'll have my dinner there. <laughs> 45, 50. Right. That is 50 quid. Now, today is Friday. You pay that into the court on Monday and you get me out. Right, sir. And you'll just be away for the weekend. That's all. <laughs> you didn't teach my little family a lesson, innit? <laughs> and you're really going to get arrested? Yes. Yeah. I've already phoned the court and told them my 14 days is up. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll be all right, sir. Yeah, of course I'll be all right. Nice little cell all to myself. Read the Sunday papers, speed up. Nice restful weekend. <laughs> right, well, it's time I went back and gave myself up. This is going to be a double. <laughs> Abbott, this way. Come on, get a move on. Right, stand there. And stand still. Hey, 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 don't you talk to me like that. I know my right. Oh, by the way, I'm bloody crummy to it. This <laughs> no talking. Right, I'll kick you up with a nice new suit Monday morning. McGurk, get up. You've got a mate. Play, mate. Show or I'll smash your face in. <laughs> oh, yes. Take no notice. He's a right madman. <laughs> You're not putting me in there with him, are you? We're a bit pressed for a room, mate. It's just for this afternoon. He'll be discharged tonight. Who is he? Slasher McGurk. <laughs> Slasher? McGurk. Right. Get inside. Forget it. I'll pay the fine. Come here, mate. Man of principle, eh? Right, inside. What you in for? Grievous bodily arm. Get it. <laughs> Don't worry, Mummy. He's probably got a nice little room all to himself. And he's bound to make friends with the other, you know, convicts. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Mum. But I've been all over the place trying to raise that 50 quid for the fine. Oh, thank you, dear. Did you try taking a connection at the Heron House? Yeah, I told everybody it was to pay a fine to get Dad out of prison. And it was packed, so I took the hat round. How much did you get? 37p. <laughs> 37p, is that all? Well, it didn't seem worth bringing it home, so I had a drink with it. <laughs> right, make it two quid. Right. You know, I've got to admire you. You in forestry, not paying a fine. Yeah, well, I'm not going to push me around, mate. It won't break me even if it's quite torture. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, Gut, to say that. Gonna hand it to you. I'll stick. Oh, I can't stick on 14. 
Oh, sorry. Chris! Get back. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting this shot tonight. Anything I can handle for you? Like what? Well, I can do that magistrate over if you like. It's one of the old GBH, my speciality. Nah, nah, I don't want to put you out here. You know. Oh, yeah. Hey, 19. How many is that? Twelve. <laughs> You ain't fibbing me, are you, Sidney? You keep thinking of that, sir. Uh, here. I can help you. Yeah. I got some money stacked behind the fire extinguisher for my last job down the local police station. No, no, you keep it. I'm saying. Oh, very nice of you to offer it. Right, how would you come in, McGurk? Don't worry, we'll keep your bunk nice and warm for you. <laughs> well, go on then, Sid. Come on, mate. I'll send you that money I owe you. In a fruit cake with a file and a pair of wire cutters. <laughs> I remember to take the teeth out. How do you go, my girl? Go on, Sid. Wilson, take that man upstairs to the office. You come with me. You got a visitor. Visitor? Hello, Sid. Quiet, please. Right, have it. Sit down there. No mucking about. No monkey business. You got two minutes. What are you doing there? How's it going, Nancy? Oh, it's all right. I can stick it to one bit. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what I come about, you see. Right. Well, uh, can I have a bit of a calamity? Get away. When I got home this afternoon, yeah. with this blood from the electricity board. No whispering. <laughs> Would you care to join us? One and a half minutes. So there was this blood from the electricity board, and we come to cut us off, because I ain't going to do it. So we got forty seven I was drawn at the bank already and that teller. What are you trying to tell me, Teller? I had to, you see. You spent my fifty quid! <laughs> Not all of you, see. Come here. No. Just the change. <laughs> Two pound fifty. No gifts or presents. That's not a present, it's the last of a fifty quid. It's all right, see, you can get out, huh? And it's my only chance to get in out of here on Monday. I oh, know. I feel awful. <laughs> I'll pay you back. A couple of quid a month. A couple of quid a month? Is that right? I should be in here for bloody years. <laughs> then I have no option, see. Hmm. You wouldn't want me to end up in a nick. <laughs> what do you think this is? The fuck me bleeding help them? Right, time's up. Out, outside. <laughs> there, his best suit, and his sports jacket, and here's a briefcase. Yeah, you should get at least 15 quid for that lot. All right, Beth. How's it going, eh? Oh, Trevor, is it really necessary? Oh, my dear. I mean, he was a broken man when I saw him last night. But he's got his pride. Poor Sid. Mm. I keep telling him, you know, pay the fine. But he wouldn't. <laughs> I got ten pounds for sitting back off. Oh, thank you, dear. We may even have enough money to, to renew the television license. It's hardly worth getting him out. You won't have anything left to come home to. <laughs> I've always fancied this jacket, I think. No, no. $2.50? All right, baby. Thank you, sir. Oh, All right, on your feet, Abbott, when a prison officer broke you. Here we are, 44 nicker. That's the best I can do. That pawnbroker drove a hard bargain. You're still six quid short. Harry? Hey. Quid me watch, 15 quid my colouring and like baby. One could be jacket, four could be trousers. Another six quid in my mouth. Six quid. Hey, you're lucky lad, Abbott. Come with me. More visitors. More visitors? Oh, see. Oh, just a moment, madam. No embracing, please. <laughs> Stand there, madam, please. You stand there. Where did you get the money? We just sold a few things. What 
things. Just a lot of clothes and things. Like what? Like suits, sports jackets, shoes, briefcase, toolkit, spot lamp. Oh, and your fishing tackle. I don't believe it. You haven't sold my clothes. Oh, <laughs> Just take me home. I want to get out of here. I want to lie down on this sofa. I want to have a drink, lots of drinks, and something to eat, and get the tea back. In front of the tent. Yes, please. Daddy, Miss Well tonight. Is it? Followed by the European Cup final. <laughs> Lead me to it. Come on, let's go. Boy, boy, are you taking that blanket? Yes. Yeah. Too quick. <laughs> Ten plastic surgery horror stories. Ten. Vaseline penis injection. 24-year-old Sylvester was left unable to have sex after he injected his penis with Vaseline in an attempt to enhance its size. A few months after the injection, Sylvester's penis became lumpy and misshapen as his body formed scar tissue around the Vaseline. Meanwhile, his foreskin swelled to more than 15 times its normal size and began splitting away from his penis. Luckily, Sylvester's penis was able to regain normal function after he underwent a corrective operation. This involved skinning his penis and removing the lumps before stitching it back up again. 9. Cooking Oil Injection Former Korean model Hang Myoku was left permanently disfigured after she injected her face with cooking oil in a bid for soft skin. As she was addicted to plastic surgery, doctors had refused to give Myoku any more silicone injections in her face as it had become noticeably puffy. So, Myoku resorted to the black market, and after self-injecting an entire bottle of silicone into her face, she began to inject cooking oil. Her DIY beauty treatment left her face so lumpy and swollen that not even her own parents could recognize her. 8. Cement Face Transgender woman Raji Narina Singh was made into a monster after an unlicensed surgeon injected her face with cement and tire sealant. In an attempt to achieve a feminine body and face, Narina Singh had injections in her cheeks, chin and lips. But the cocktail of toxic substances left her face misshapen, with rock-hard lumps bulging under her skin and a large boil, which grew until it exploded green pus and blood onto her bathroom mirror. The botched procedure left Narina Singh too embarrassed to leave the house, until years later when the mixture was removed by a licensed surgeon. 7. Flesh-Eating Infection Rodrigo Alves was left with a gaping hole in his nose after contracting a flesh-eating infection following a nose job. The human Kendall had undergone his seventh nose job, but his body rejected the new cartilage leading to the infection. As the hole in Alves' nose grew, he struggled to breathe, and doctors warned that the infection could eat through his nose and spread across his face. Due to the risk of the infection turning gangrenous, Alves' nose had to be rebuilt using cartilage from his rib area. 6. Arse Amputation Hairstylist April Michelle Brown underwent a quadruple limb and buttock amputation after having a butt implant injected on the black market. Instead of the enhancing silicone Brown was expecting, the unlicensed practitioner injected Brown's buttocks with bathroom sealant. The botched implant caused Brown agony and quickly became infected. 
Doctors were forced to induce Brown into a coma and carry out 27 operations in order to stop the infection. When Brown awoke two months later, she found that her legs, arms and butt had been amputated. 5. Suck skin Tabitha Barrett risked her life for her dream body after seeing a cosmetic surgery package on the internet. Barrett paid $15,000 to undergo liposuction on her waist and thighs, as well as breast augmentation at a cosmetic surgery in Thailand. But during the liposuction, complications arose and Barrett had to be saved with blood transfusions. She awoke to find bags of her fat at the end of her bed while her legs were covered in bruises and open wounds. It turned out that the doctors had removed 11 litres of fat from her body in one go, more than double the recommended amount during a single procedure. 4. Beauty Queen 19-year-old medical student Catherine Kando tragically died while undergoing liposuction after winning the procedure at a beauty pageant. Although Kando said in an interview that she was happy with her weight and didn't want cosmetic surgery, she was pestered into undergoing the procedure by Dr. Gustavo, who sat on the judging panel. Kando eventually underwent liposuction with the aim of shrinking her waist by 3 centimeters, but sadly, complications occurred during the surgery and she died after fluid accumulated in her brain. 3. Eyes Wide Open After losing weight from gastric bypass surgery, a woman named Dawn underwent upper and lower eyelid surgery to tighten up the excess skin near her eyes. However, after the surgery, Dawn realised that something was wrong and she was unable to control her tears. As well as crying involuntarily, Dawn's surgery means that she also sleeps with her eyes open. She attempted to sue the surgeon who carried out the procedure, but the doctor claimed bankruptcy and denied botching her procedure. 2. Puncture Wounds April Jenkins tragically died while undergoing a botched liposuction. According to the police report, during the procedure Jenkins complained of feeling tearing and burning sensations, so the medical staff stuffed the propofol soaked rag into her mouth to shut her up. When the fat transfer procedure was complete, Jenkins began making odd moaning noises before having a seizure and falling into respiratory arrest due to fluid buildup. Jenkins died shortly after the procedure and medical examiners found that she had endured multiple puncture wounds to her diaphragm and liver. 1. Latent TB Kerry Aaliyah suffered years of ill health after her breast enlargement surgery triggered previously inactive tuberculosis bacteria in her body. A few years after her operation, her breast implants exploded as the tuberculosis had eaten away at the scar tissue that held the implants in place. Aaliyah had the implants taken out but became infected with the bacteria MRSA while in hospital. The scar tissue from her multiple breast operations turned septic, leading to Aaliyah needing a double mastectomy. But the nightmare didn't end there and the tuberculosis returned, leaving doctors no choice but to remove part of her lung. Sadly, Aaliyah didn't recover, and she died soon after her lung operation. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, then check out 10 Health Myths Everyone Still Believes. It's really great. And if you did like this video, leave us a comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. The people on TLC's reality television show, My 600 Pound Life, usually didn't have the easiest lives, what which is how rich? most of them got to the point where the only thing that can you? help them lose hey? weight to become sure. healthier is surgery. For some of these people, baby. it seems like life never stops challenging them. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at eight of the saddest stories on My 600